Hey everybody, Mike here. Thanks for tuning into my video. Today's video is kind of unique and we're doing a little entry slab that's going to be broom finished. Now this, this was just dirt here. These people bought this building that hired us and they're remodeling it into a collision center. So they'll be working on, you know, cars that get in wrecks here. And they had to redo the entryway. So they cut this piece of uh, land or just dirt or whatever out and we had to they put this door in here there wasn't a door here before so we got to match the parking lot up to the slab which is ends up being quite a bit of slope now this won't be their only entrance but this will be one of the one of the front entrances to the main road when you drive off the road so if you if you need to know how to number one just do a simple broom finish like entry slab this is going to show you how to do that but also something that has quite a bit of slope in it now what we did, we came in and did the prep. We put up, we got ISO strip foam all the way around this thing. So up against the asphalt, up against this slab here closest to you, then up against the building, we got ISO strip foam just to keep, you know, to allow the, the new concrete to expand to contract and so it doesn't stick to, you know, all its surroundings. And then we drilled and pinned this fiberglass rebar into the existing building because there's no way this thing can heave and cause the door, you know, to get stuck. And then we put two inches of styrofoam down to help protect the frost from getting underneath it too. Plus we got uh, 4,000 PSI concrete we're using with air entrainment. So, cause this is exterior, we live in Maine, we go through a lot of freeze and thaw cycles. And the air entrainment helps the concrete uh, expand and contract or it helps it absorb water in the winter and it allows that water to freeze inside the concrete without popping the concrete to a certain extent. So that's what air entrainment does. Plus we got fiber mesh in here. We put we put the micro fiber mesh in all our pores just to help a little bit with shrinkage cracking. Now this stuff's about a foot thick up against the building and it goes down to about six or seven inches thick up against the asphalt. And there's probably two or three inches of slope in, the, in this six feet right here. So you're going to get to see just how we pour something with quite a bit of slope. Now this is about as loose as you're going to want to pour it. I mean from, I don't know what this is, this might be like a five slump if, if it ended up being slumped out in a cone. Maybe even a four slump might work a little better, but um, it's going to end up, as you see, as we get it magged and screeded, um, it's going to end up sagging just a little bit and that's kind of normal. You're going to fix that when you finish, so don't let something like that completely hold you up from getting this thing screeded and bowl floated as you only have so much time to get the concrete down. Plus, technically, you only got so much time with the concrete truck on site before they start charging you extra. When you go to mag the edges around this thing, like I said, you just got to understand, like, once we get enough concrete in here, Look, it's going to want to kind of fall away if the concrete's going to want to fall away from the building a little bit so you're going to have to keep kind of pulling it upwards and as we're magging up against the building when we mag that area you know about the width of the mag you're going to mag that somewhat flat just to help keep the concrete in place without sagging up against the building and then as you screed it you're going to screed the slope into the little area you're magging like right there where i'm magging right now I'm not necessarily screeding a slope into that. But when Darren screeds it, he'll end up screeding um, the slope into it. And then as we finish it, we can work on that slope even more. Now we're also, we also lightly vibrated that using my DeWalt pencil vibrator just to help consolidate the concrete down at the bottom around that rebar. The trouble is, you know, you can't go too hard with it because it's just going to want to it's just going to want to sag the concrete towards the parking lot so we just went pretty easy with that you can see I'm kind of taking my time as I'm magging up against the building what I'm doing here is I'm just squirting off the residual concrete from uh, Luke's concrete boots when he got up there and walked on it we don't typically walk on uh, other concrete areas when our concrete boots are dirty but he's kind of new he's kind of a rookie at it so no, no big deal. We can just squirt it off with the hose right there. 
We don't like to get the surrounding areas too dirty from our concrete boots. You know, you want to be nice and neat and clean when you do stuff like this. Now that we got most of the edges, you can see I'm kind of still pulling the concrete up as Darren's screeding it. It it kind of want to it kind of wants to work its way towards the parking lot even when you're walking in it. And Darren's going really careful with the screed, nice and slow, making sure he's got good slope, making sure there's no dips under the screed, especially where his feet are. And then I'm kind of just pulling the concrete, raking it upwards into the back of his feet so he can, every time he picks his foot up and moves his foot, he can take a little bit of that extra crete from behind him and fill his foot tracks in. Yeah, see, we got something to walk on now so we don't make too much of a mess in the parking lot. You can kind of see the slope pretty good now that Darren's getting it. He's got it about half screeded. That's Luke there working on his magging skills. <laughs> this is his second summer. He worked a little bit last summer as a, you know, he was a junior going into his, his senior year in high school. Now he's graduated from high school now, so he's going kind of between his senior season and probably going into college. Yeah, we needed just a little bit more. We backed the truck kind of out of the way, get shoots out of the way. So we had a little bit left in his chutes, luckily, and then we just scraped his chute down and got about another bucket full of concrete in there to kind of fill up where Darren's boots were. You can see how I'm digging it away from the asphalt. That's just... That's just the concrete kind of slightly sagging towards that way as we're screeding. And we're still going to have a little bit, still going to be a little high there because of the, because of the uh, wetness or looseness or firmness, however you want to call the concrete. Because of the state it's in right now, it's hard to get it right perfectly matched to the asphalt. We'll do that a little bit later coming up really soon in the video. And then as I bull float, I'm going to go really slow here. I don't want to I don't want to sag the concrete any further. I don't want to go all the way up next to the building and then tip the bull float and create a big divot up there, so I'm keeping it a little bit away from the edge on both ends. I'm just trying to smooth out the concrete a little bit. Luckily, this isn't that big that I can reach most of it by hand too from the outside. You can see we put the plastic up against the building just to try to keep any splatters off the building. There was a, a little bit of dirt on the building already, probably from just, you know, working this area with the asphalt, getting the dirt out, putting more dirt in. So what we'll do is we'll take that plastic down when we go to finish, get that out of the way in case the wind picks up. Yeah, you can see right there. So what I'm doing now is I'm just using my little, what I call my little funny float on a handle and I'm just mag floating kind of the surface out a little bit better than what the bull float got it. And then I'm going to just leave it for a little bit and let it set up until it gets ready to finish. But I just, I want to get it in a pretty good looking state right here, the surface, before I just leave it and let it go because if it does firm up on me quite a bit, I want to make sure the surface is pretty smooth. It's just going to make finishing that much easier. There, so we left it for about 20 or 30 minutes. It's pretty warm out today. It was about 80 degrees, so the concrete's curing up on us pretty fast. But we did, we did get about a 20 or 30 minute break before we had to come back here and start finishing. Luke's going around the edges with the edger. And you can see how I'm kind of cutting out the little bit of concrete that sagged because I want that slope to be nice and even. I don't want a tiny little hump there before you reach the asphalt that you'd notice, you know, when you're walking over it. So, you know, I got back to the finishing part early enough where the concrete's soft enough so I can scrape that little bit out. But it's also... It's, it's hard enough so it's not going to sag anymore now. It's firm enough now so it won't sag. I just had to scrape out a little bit along this front edge. The rest of it all looked pretty good. And I'm just matching. 
I'm just matching right up to the asphalt because they're not going to do anything to the asphalt here. They're just going to leave it for now. And they just wanted this entry. This, act, this actually entry. I don't know if it's going to be the front entry of the collision center where the customers go in or if it's the front entry for the employees to walk through. That part we didn't know. They were still too early in the building stages. They had the inside of it all gutted out. They were rewiring stuff. They were repainting, putting in HVAC, you know, all that stuff inside. But they needed this front walkway so they could continue moving forward with the outside because they had they had the excavation contractors here. They were kind of working on the outside of the building, trying to fix up, you know, whatever underground stuff they needed to put in and then they'll finish up the landscaping. So if we didn't get this in now, we were going to be kind of holding them up a little bit. So we jumped right on this, got this out of the way. We're also doing some work inside. We're doing a little bit of, they had some guys come in. They cut out some floor on the inside of this building. And then they hired some other guys. I don't know who these other guys were to come in and, and re-pour the concrete floor where they cut out. And they kind of messed that up pretty bad. <laughs> they kind of wish they'd hired us. So they hired us to come in and do some grinding on what these other people did so I got Darren's in there grinding Luke's in there grinding trying to fix up the the new concrete floor they they just paid somebody to do to make it look a little bit better but out here on the outside Luke's using the funny funny float kind of smoothing out the surface we're gonna put a nice broom finish across this and then what we're what I'm doing over here is I'm just filling in some low areas up against that siding that was hard to get when the concrete was looser I want them to look nice and neat. I don't want any lower areas where, you know, water could collect or anything like that. So we're making sure everything's filled in really nice. Magging the surface out. And we're going to put the broom finish on here real soon. Luke's doing the best he can to get up there against the building. But the trouble with that funny float is you can't get any head pressure on the very front of it, on the tip of it, like you can on a hand mag like what I'm doing. So there's a real small area up there where that door is that we couldn't get very good. I'm trying to reach out and get all of it, but I just can't from the outside. So I'm going to go, I'll end up going in the building and opening the door here in a second. You'll see there. You can see the slope away from that as I open the door. There's that one little area we couldn't get right there with the funny float. You can see Luke's really liking that funny float. He's just back and forth, back and forth, making sure everything looks as good as possible. That's all right though. He's just learning. He's a beginner, so the more he can, the more he can uh, work the finishing tools, the better he's going to end up being. That's about 12 feet across there. We're going to just work together. He's going to set it down for me really lightly. And as I pull this broom, what you can't notice is the broom's going to want to work its way towards the parking lot. So I'm putting a little bit of pressure up towards the building as I pull it back. So the broom doesn't actually kind of fall off the slab. I'm trying to keep those broom marks as straight as I possibly can. You know, kind of going east to west here. That's just one thing you can't notice, you know, watching in a video that you would notice. If you were the one pulling this broom back, it, it would kind of want to fall to my left. And I'm just tapping a little bit of that extra paste, cement paste out of the bristles by tapping it on the bucket like that. That's what I'd call a light to medium broom finish right there. It's got enough texture so if it gets wet, you know, you're not going to slip on it. You're not going to slip on it in the winter unless they just let it ice over. That's another thing about pouring exterior concrete in Maine. You know, if you don't have air entrainment in it and they go to throw salt or de-icing stuff on it, the surface is just going to peel right off it. You gotta, you, The concrete's got to be able to absorb water and then when that water freezes it expands inside the concrete otherwise your concrete's just going to be a mess it's going to look like exposed aggregate here in Maine so we have to we have to pour and finish concrete with air entrainment in it all the time here 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off with a two foot broom the best I can up against that siding and then Luke's going to go get the little finishing the finishing broom the little hand one and he's just going to touch up the edges what I couldn't get really good with a two footer and just make blend everything in make it look really nice and then we'll clean up around the outside we'll probably even strip our form today we'll let this set up for a couple hours because the guys will be working inside for a couple more hours we'll strip that form off today and then the excavators can have at it for the next day they can just finish things off so look if you want to learn about stuff like this you know join the concrete underground the link for that is in the description below where i teach i have all my training videos in there uh, thanks for watching this one if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing come on back we'll see you on the next one